capturing the design history file and device master record are examples of two document structures that are required by the regulatory bodies. They are associated to a device or a product and we need to be able to capture changes to them. This can in many cases be a manual tedious task to complete. So having a system that where you easy can create as many regulatory structures that you want to manage and have them managed in the same way so that they are automatically created, automatically tracked, automatically baseline should be a requirement for any solution in the medical device industry. Several of our customers find that there are other documentation structures like the technical file that will also need to be managed in the same way as the DHF and DMR. Having an easy way to create new documentation structures like the DHF and DMR that have the same requirements for change management and traceability is a critical factor in order to be able to support not only your immediate needs but also your possible needs in the future. In a company, the team are working on the design of a new respiratory ventilator. As you can imagine, developing such equipment is a very complex project and having full traceability of what was done by who, what was changed with what, is crucial not only for getting ventilators to the market faster, but also for getting the required approvals from the regulatory bodies. In this company, project changes are not a nightmare anymore. Let's see how Minerva PLM actually supports them. Mike and his team is working very hard to complete the ventilator project. But during the concept phase, they realized that they will not be able to complete the patent filing within the concept phase, and they wish to move that to the next phase, which is engineering prototype. In order to do such a change in Minerva PLM, there is a need to do a change order called design change. This is done in order to maintain the audit trail and the traceability of changes that have been made. These changes can be automatically created from the change section of the project by clicking the design change button. This will automatically create the change order, which Mike now automatically can go in and vote to the next step. Getting it to this start work will create a new revision. As we see, the revision changes from D to E, and it's now in work, meaning that Mike can go in and edit this project. So he does this, he identifies the um, patent filing deliverable, right clicks, cuts that deliverable, goes down to engineering prototype and paste the deliverable in this phase. By clicking save, now this deliverable is moved from concept and into engineering prototype. As we can see here, it is now located in the engineering prototype phase of the project. Project is still in the status of in work, meaning that this change to the project has not yet been accepted. In order to get that accepted, Mike needs to push this design change into a review step where the steering group can assess the proposed changes and make a decision whether or not this should be allowed. So Mike goes in and he sends this for review. He can write a comment. Due to time, we would like to move the patent filing to the next phase. When he clicks complete, notifications are sent out to the entire steering group that there now is a change request from Mike to move this deliverable. They can now assess this change and come with their input whether or not they want to approve this change. In the meanwhile, all Mike can do is wait. After a while, Mike gets notified that the steering group has approved his changes and when he goes to his project now, he can see that the revision E is now released. When he moves into his project, he can now see that the patent filing is no longer part of concept phase, but has been moved to the engineering prototype phase. So this buys the team a little bit more time to complete the concept phase and do everything properly in there. For traceability reasons, old versions and baselines are always kept in the system. So if anybody wants to see 
Well, we can see now that this is revision E. What was the status of revision D of this project? And how did the deliverable matrix and all the deliverables look at that point in time? Mike can go and open the version section of this project where all versions and baselines of the project is being kept. He can go back to the revision D and open that. When we open the revision D of the project, we can clearly see that the patent filing here was part of the concept phase, while now it is part of the engineering prototype. In this baselining, Minerva PLM will not only keep the history of what, what was in which phase, but we also keep track of which version of each deliverable was actually valid at any point in time. And if you open any file, any deliverable, any part from a previous version, you will always be sent to that specific version of the deliverable that was valid at that point in time, providing a very strong audit trail and true baselining of your projects. Thank you.